So I, my, I'm Marcus. I've made a, what's it called? a package with two of my, uh, my colleagues from university. Um, we're from the Technical University of Denmark. They were not here to help me present, and I don't think we have time to be more presenters anyway, so probably really good. It's called Physics and Form Regression, and essentially it's a fast way to compute parameters from modeling when modeling with differential equations. So first of all, like most of you will know what the inverse problem is. We've also gone through it already with uh, uh, not with, with you. Uh, so I won't go too much into it. Essentially, if you have data uh, of uh, what's it called, uh, that is described by some dynamical system, uh, we should be able to estimate the parameters that were uh, that were used to, uh, or uh, that best describe the behavior of the data. Um, and uh, we have already a ton of ways to do this in the in the CML uh, what's it called ecosystem, but uh, I'm proposing a method that uh, that rather than using nonlinear regression, just uses a least square uh, an ordinary least square estimate uh, to get quick results. So uh, first of all, I'm not going to go too much into math. We don't have time for that, and no one wants to hear it anyways. So I'm, I'm just going to explain what are the assumptions of the uh, of the framework. Well, first of all, the Mo uh, the the system can be nonlinear, but they sh it should be linear in terms of the parameters, because essentially what happens is the syst the symbolic system will be rewritten into a matrix, uh, matrix ve vector um, equation, uh, evaluated for each uh, for e for each observation, and then uh, and then there is exist a, a global minimizer for, or a glo global optimum for the uh, parameters. Um, which can just be computed with one iteration of linear solve. Um, so I assume most know how to set up uh, dynamic models with uh, with uh, differential equations. So I won't go too much into that. But that's uh, with this new symbolic framework. This work framework it's been it's uh, super clean. And uh, for these examples, these are very ideal examples that I'm working with. So I'll just be working with simulated data. And trying to recreate the parameters that uh, I was that were used during the uh, the simulation of the of the data set, and see if I can find those. Um, my package is essentially just these two lines of code: one to appro approximate the the derivative from the data, and uh, another one is essentially just the regression framework, or the, the regression algorithm um, that takes as input the symbolic model as defined on the previous slide. The vector of, uh, of of states uh, for each for each time time step and the of uh, corresponding derivatives. Um, the algorithm takes about 30 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, so uh, super fast. And uh, but and uh, for and it should be mentioned before I try to make it seem better than it actually is. This is ideal conditions. So uh, it, this only works because you can create a pretty good approximation of the state derivatives. In practice, if you have noisy data, you will need some other kind of strategy to approximate derivatives for for the state, some uh, some smoothing strategy or something like that. In here, I'm just doing spline interpolation on the data and then getting the analytical solution from the spline derivatives. Um, yes. Uh, what else? I also have, uh, Chris, you mentioned that there are also always three x. You always go with Lotka Volterra as a prime example, and also, of course, the Lorentz attractor. Uh, so one of the other examples, so I thought I would have that uh, as well on the slides. Is of course it's a way more sensitive uh, uh, system. So so with the, even with ac re relatively accurate estimates of the parameters, you will uh, the trajectory will still di will diverge over time from the uh, if if there's just a small difference in uh, in estimates. Originally, we we found this m this method by uh, when working with uh, COVID-19 in. Um, back in 2021, so so I also included the SIRM model, which was uh, is essentially the, the the original what's it called project we work with, as mentioned. Um, yes, what else? Well, the, the neat thing, something that is also new, new super neat, but that is just in general with the with the SIRM framework, is that uh, with Catalyst, it's super easy to also it, what's it called convert systems to uh, convert reaction models on into these symbolic models they all just just can be passed as input pin, input to the uh, physics and form regression uh, algorithm uh, so uh, so yeah so if you're working if you're not a big fan fan of uh, ODE models you can just do a reaction network and still um, fit the data onto the uh, model pretty uh, pretty easy, pretty click neatly uh, this is just a simulated example that's why there's someone but they, 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 it's the two last lines of codes that are 
the same two lines of course as uh, of course as actual uh, 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 always will be um well compare it uh, just to quickly compare with uh Oh, I have plenty of time. I thought I was oh, that was nice. nice. Oh, yeah, I've been uh, sorry, I've been rushing through this. <laughs> so, um, I guess there will be more time for questions than this now. Well, the uh, packages that already is, already exist for doing this. There are of course many, but I'm just going to mention some of them here. Of the uh, the diff uh, defect parameter, which is essentially just uh, a, a simplified uh, what's it called framework for you solving this in uh, this exact problem. And that it does in fact use nonlinear regression, which is more where you have to uh, supply an objective function, and it's in, in, in generally r way more robust. Uh, but of course, it requires a nonlinear optimization algorithm, which takes ti longer time to to run. Uh, the alternative strategy is to use uh, use something like Cindy, which is also not only re parameter or like what's a model regression, but also model discovery. Um, and the idea that we had for this uh, this algorithm is essentially just uh, a re, uh, what's it called? Um, another way to uh, an, uh, called, interpret Cindy, which is to do the exact same algorithm but constrain it onto the uh, what's it called? The the known model. So there's no, so it's Cindy, Cindy without model uh, discovery, but essentially just including the uh, the model fitting onto the data. Um, yes, that was it. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, thank you. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, Cindy used some variational regularization for calculating the derivatives, especially for noisy data. Yeah. Could you comment on how your implementation works on this? Well, mine is definitely way worse. I have looked at the Cindy impl implementation, and I was just wondering if I should just uh, what's it called like import that into. Uh, into my uh, into my model to to use that for more accurate derivative approximate um, uh, approximations, uh, but I haven't done that. So uh, so this is just my own uh, what's it called, kind of a worse version of uh, of a, a derivative approximation. But of course that would improve the performance because right now it seems like it's good, but as soon as you have like uh, l less frequently sampled uh, data uh, with high noise, then doing calculating derivatives like this will not work or will not will give really bad results. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Yeah, th thank you for your presentation. Um, so one of the uh, issues with, uh, I, I, I can see, I, I typically see with the, these type of uh, regression methods is what do you do when you don't have data for all your state variables? Have you thought about uh, looking into something like that? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Uh, well, it, you should be able, in that case, then I was thinking if I had more time, I would do it so you can supply some, you, you choose which state variables you want to supply, and then it'll only, uh, what's it called, use the part of the matrix, the original rate matrix rewriting, that include those state variables. And you can still do the fitting, but of course there will be some parameters, of course the parameters that depend on those equations will not be as estimated correctly. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm sorry you probably said it, but can you use irregularly spaced data as an input to your algorithm? Or yeah. Great. <laughs> as long as you have derivatives as well, uh, uh, approximations for those. Uh, what's it called? Those values. Anyone else? Good. Uh, that, that, that went super fast. <laughs> okay. 